Hey guys, it's your boy Joe back at it again, man. CodingFace.com. I want to welcome you guys to my PHP course. All right, learn PHP 7 and beyond. Okay, I want you guys to get used to this because this idea of learning PHP in 2017, it seems like some people will tell you don't learn it, some people tell you learn it. Well, now I'm going to give you reasons to learn PHP. All right. I want you to know that PHP is the number one programming language when it comes to the web, right? It's not the fastest, it's not the most uh, popular between developers, but when it comes to businesses, and businesses are the ones that hire you, PHP is number one, right? There's so many websites out there using WordPress, there's so many websites out there using Laravel, there's so many websites out there using uh, CodeIgniter, a slim there's so many different frameworks that people use symphony like guys the list goes on and on and on of frameworks that people use for php now i'm going to go over a couple of pages here to show you why you should learn php okay so first of all you're gonna look at this as you can see uh pretty much these are a couple of the most popular websites that are actually using PHP at this moment. All right. So either they're using it through WordPress in the back end, they're using it through uh, using a framework like Laravel, et cetera. All right. They're all using PHP. And one of the biggest guys ever, all right, the biggest website in the world was built and still being used with PHP, which is Facebook.com. You guys can look it up. Facebook has been built with uh, PHP, and it's, it's pretty popular. Even though by now they they pretty much have modified the language to work for them, but it's pretty much PHP on the core. All right. Now let's go to the next page. I'm gonna give you guys this example because on the internet, on the web, on the internet, interwebs. <laughs> <laughs> how people call it nowadays uh they say hey man php is dying php is dead uh php is underground no it's not what's happening is as you can see this is a trend chart okay trends trends okay so when they say trends is usually websites start popping up but what does that mean popping up well, those are new websites, right? So if I'm a new company, a new startup, and I'm looking on which programming language I should use, a developer, a senior developer, a software engineer will say, hey, let's use the latest things. You know, we got Node.js, we got Elixir, we got uh, Python showing up. You know, people's gonna wanna use what they like, right? And one thing that you have to understand, PHP is not a pretty language. PHP is not the best language out there. PHP is not the fastest. So as a developer, they're going to choose something that's fast, something that's fun, something that they're going to enjoy using. But that does not discredit the fact that PHP is being used in millions and millions of websites, right? And businesses, right? Because you got to understand, startups come and go. Very rare to see a company that's a startup become successful. But businesses that are already established, they are using technologies that have been proven to work. So they use stuff like PHP, all right? Now, I want you guys to just keep that in mind. Whenever you hear somebody tell you, hey, PHP is dead, PHP is underground, you know, PHP is a zombie out here, all right? <laughs> it's funny, it's one of those things that people love to say on the internet, but it's not the reality of things, especially for junior developers. You yourself probably is a junior developer, somebody who's brand new, who's trying to get into the industry. So if you want to get into the industry, you should be using something that's going to give you the most chances to get a job, right? A lot of people will say, hey, I want to use something that's cool and popular and it's in right now. But the reality of things is, the jobs out there, the ones that you're going to be able to get, they want people that are actually 
you know, established, somebody who has been doing this for a couple of years. You're a brand new developer, so your opportunities are really with PHP. Because you got to think about it like this. There's guys who have been doing PHP for 10, 15 years, right? They're senior level developers, right? And they're like, oh, man, I've been doing PHP for so long. I want to try something else. I want to go to another company. I want to go work with Node.js. So now they leave that company. But now that space is still open. Who else is going to get that job? It's most likely it's not going to be another senior developer because a senior developer is looking for the new technologies. He's looking to have fun and enjoy his time at work. But for you, you're a junior developer. You're somebody who's trying to get into the industry. You don't care what the job is as long as you're doing web development. This is where you win. This is where you come in and you say, hey, I know PHP. Let me get that job. Right? So the company is going to hire you because of that. Because you're coming in hungry. You want to do the work. You enjoy PHP. You know, you've been around a few months. So you haven't been burnt out, burnt out or et cetera, right? Things that happen to developers. So let's move on to the next thing, which is showing you like the real numbers behind the scenes of like a lot of websites, right? So we have PHP leading the way of the top 10,000 sites, meaning the most popular websites on the web, period, 20%. So almost throughout the whole board, it's always going to be 20%. It's from 18 to 20%. Constantly, right? And then from there, you got ASP.NET, Ruby on Rails, Node.js, Express, Python, Django, Laravel, etc. Right? You start looking at the top 1,000, it's the same people, right? Start looking at the top 1 million, right? It's pretty simple, it's almost the same thing. The entire web, you start looking and you're like, oh man, like pretty much PHP just runs the web when it comes to websites, all right? So I would definitely say for you guys to learn PHP. Okay. Now we're going to look into this. We're going to come here and we're going to look at jobs, right? First of all, we're going to look at Ruby, right? We got Ruby in New York, New York City, you know, let's say, let's say 50 mile radius from New York City. All right. Find that. There's about 77 jobs this month, right? Now, in Ohio, which is a third market, you know, pretty much a smaller city, you know, the middle of nowhere, you got 17 jobs for Ruby on Rails. All right, we do the same thing for Node. Come here, we say Node. There's three jobs in a third market, which is something that I tell people a lot of times. Like, unless you live on a major city, most companies are not using Node.js or the latest programming languages or backend languages at all. They're using more safe uh, languages, okay? So there's uh, uh, for Node.js, right? In Ohio, in New York City, Node.js, there's about 53 jobs for this month, okay? Now, let's look into PHP, okay? There's 128 for PHP, which means the double of Node in a very big city like New York City, especially a tech city like New York, all right? So you look at this, 128. So you got twice the amount of jobs, okay? Now let's do the same thing in Ohio. Let's look. And you got 13 jobs in Ohio. That's not bad, to be honest with you. Because you know, these are smaller cities. They're not really, uh, how you call this, they're not really like tech companies are usually located in the cities. But that doesn't mean that there's not jobs. Because if you start looking at places like, you know, like Craigslist, Indeed.com is only like a small part of your search for jobs online, right? You got Indeed.com, you got Craigslist, you got Dice.com, this, uh, you got Monster. There's a whole bunch of places that you can find jobs, right? ZipRecruiter, you know, so pretty much there's a whole bunch of places that you can find jobs for PHP. But like I said, 
one thing that you would notice is that the the starting range for it, right, is at sixty thousand for PHP and seventy five thousand dollars in New York City. Now, what this number tells me is that there's definitely a lower salary to start with PHP than other languages like Ruby or Rails or Node.js. But you gotta always remember this: when a company is paying a lot of money. Like let's say seventy five, uh, let's say eighty thousand, ninety thousand, hundred thousand. They're looking for top, you know, the top of the top of developers, right? So in reality, as a junior developer who's self-taught, your chances of getting those jobs in reality is less, right? So what you want to do is you want to be able to build a resume and say, hey, I've been working at this company this company and this company to get those higher paying jobs, right? Talking about $80,000, $90,000, $100,000. To get those jobs, I would definitely advise you to learn PHP. Learn it, learn how to build websites, learn how to build web applications, learn how to work with databases like MySQL, MongoDB, etc. right? And then from there, give yourself a year, apply for those bigger jobs, right? A lot of people get discouraged because they come in and they say, hey, man, I need to learn, uh, you know, the latest thing out there. And then they can't find a job. And why is that? Because you got to think about it. All the top developers out there are also learning that new technology that you just learned. So now you're competing with guys who have been around six, seven, eight, nine, ten years in the industry. And then you're a self-taught developer coming in. And that has no history of working on any company. So it's like, why would this company trust you to, you know, to hire you? It's very rare. It happens, you know, but it's one of those things that is just a little bit of luck. A lot of times people forget about that. They forget about that little extra factor in life. That is just like, okay, you came in, you smiled the right person, you you talked to the right person, that they the person was in a really good mood and say okay let me give a chance to this guy but that doesn't happen for everybody right you have to put yourself in situations where you have control of things you just don't leave it to luck right when you join something like a community like for php and you're trying to learn php and you're learning laravel etc whatever framework you want to learn out there but you're using php it gives you the opportunity to get into the industry by you having your own skills and just coming in and say, okay, I got the skills, I'm ready to work, I have a portfolio, give me an opportunity, I'm here to work. You're going to get that, right? When you're trying to learn the latest and, and greatest languages out there, you're competing with the whole world because everybody wants to learn those things. Everybody wants to get those cool jobs where it's like, oh yeah, you're working, on Python, you're working on Ruby and Rails, oh, you're working on, on Node.js. Yes, but wouldn't you think that if everybody else is trying to learn those things and everybody else is trying to get those jobs, don't you think the competition is going to be a little bit more fierce, right? So to be smarter, you will say, hey, I'm going to come in, join an e-commerce website, join a a digital agency, build a couple of WordPress sites for a few months, build my resume, build my portfolio, let companies know that, hey, I have the skills, give me a chance, hire me now, because I have the skills now, you know what I mean? So I definitely tell people, learn PHP. You have to learn PHP. It's like mandatory. It doesn't matter if right now, in 2017, you started, right? Let's say you start in September learning how to code. In December 2017, you got a job as a web developer and they have a backend PHP, you're going to use PHP there. It doesn't matter if it's 2017 or 2021, at some point, you're going to have to use PHP. Doesn't matter what company it is, doesn't matter, uh, you know, what is it that you're doing, the front end or the back end, at some point, you're going to bump into that little elephant of PHP. Now, do you want to say, hey, I want to learn PHP at that moment or say, hey, I'm already prepared for PHP. It's an easy language. 
and it's going to give me the opportunity to get into the industry. So I will definitely tell you guys, learn PHP, and that's what you hear. All right. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.